Christian Bush, wonderful to see you. You're in New York. Uh, I understand that you've had a couple of near-death experiences recently and your first child, a daughter. Congratulations on that. I'd love to explore some of the work you've been doing around uh, serendipity, and we can see behind you the couple of books, The Serendipity Mindset and Connect the Dots. But before we do that, what are you? Yeah, well, that's a great question. Thank you so much, John, for having me. Um, yeah, I, you know, I feel I'm on a constant search for meaning. I'm trying to figure out what gives me meaning, what gives others meaning, how can I be part of shaping that? And so I started out, you know, I used to be that kid in high school. I was thrown out of high school, had to repeat a year. I probably helped the unofficial world record of how many dustbins you can knock over on your way to <laughs> school when you're driving. And then one day I wasn't so lucky anymore and crashed into four parked cars. And, and I will, you know, like all the cars completely destroyed, including my own. And I won't forget the policeman who came to the scene and he was like, oh, my God, he's still alive. And, you know, that idea that I was supposed to be dead, that stuck with me. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I asked myself all these weird questions, you know, if I would have died, who would have come to my funeral? Who would have actually cared? Was it all worth it? And at that point, I had only depressing answers. And so it took me on this kind of intense uh, uh, search for meaning, trying to figure out what is life all about. And we just talked about that. You know, I, I, I found that book that I. Uh, highly recommend everyone Viktor Frankl's Man's Search for Meaning, which helped me find my meaning, um, which I realized is, hey, I love connecting people. I love connecting dots and the sparks that come from that. And so that took me on that journey as community builder, entrepreneur, social entrepreneur, and then later um, into academia, um, trying to figure out, you know, because we were building all these things, but we were building them while we were flying. And, and we talked about impact and all these things, but what did we actually know? And so the inner imposter said, hey, why don't we try to figure out what's actually known. And so that was kind of the more academic side coming out and saying, okay, are there patterns behind this? And what's fascinating, John, and I think um, that's something, you know, with you as well, right? I feel people like you intuitively do a lot of, of, of that kind of serendipity work. But what I found fascinating is in our research around the world, from, you know, uh, Kenya to, uh, to, to, to the US, the most successful purpose-driven people, they seem to have something in common, which is that they somehow intuitively cultivate serendipity. They see a little bit more in the unexpected and then connect the dots and do something with it. And so the, the fascination really has become, is there a science-based framework for this? Because that now feels the kind of most mm. meaningful way to, to channel my energy. You're now working, you worked at LSE and you're working at New York University. And my experience of, of the academic world is, is positive in large measure where people are properly learning, but the politics of the academic world are pretty severe at times. And people, I mean, you talk about a science of serendipity. Are you doing that simply to be academically credible or is because you genuinely think there's going to be a, a science there? I feel most of my life has been serendipitous, right? The way I set up the companies together with others, we met serendipitously, we kind of came up serendipitously with ideas. Um, the, the way I found the love of my life, the way my child came into the world. So I feel I've always been operating that way. But mm. then, you know, when I started, I wanted to, to work on it in academia, people would say, Christian, like this is academic suicide. Like you you will, like the, you, you cannot work on something elusive like this. This is kind of like an art and it's not a science. And so what I found fascinating is um, around five, six, six years ago, when we kind of started to doing the, the first kind of like deeper studies around it that, that now have been published and that, that kind of like in a way gave the academic kind of credibility from a management perspective uh, on it. I think what, what became fascinating is that a lot of people from around the world would say, oh, my God, I've been secretly trying to research on this for a while. So now kind of like, I feel like a bit more of, of legitimacy. And that's the beautiful thing. I think in management is relatively new kind of quote unquote scientific approach towards it um, where a lot of times we would have said oh no like you know luck is something that we can't really control and we're essentially saying no there is there is this kind of smart luck that depends on spotting the unexpected and then doing something with it and that's a process that's this process of spotting and connecting dots and we can observe that when we observe people we can look at counterfactuals so we can see how people differently react to particular situations and what could have happened had they so um, we can do experiments. So there's a lot of ways of how we can study it now. And so that's really the science part. But but John, what, I'm, what I find fascinating, and that was to me the biggest excuse also, um, you know, loving to connect dots is that the natural sciences have studied this for such a long time. You know, in, in molecular chemistry, they've they've studied how can you accelerate Atlas. unknown reactions, right? And, yeah. and in physics, they, they've studied how um, how energy kind of travels and all these kind of things. And so I think there's so much in there where we can bring those different sciences together and say, wow, at the end, they all say the same thing. And funny enough, they say very similar things to spiritual kind of, you know, the whole idea 
um, of the more you put out there, the more you get back and everything else. And so I think yeah. serendipity is a beautiful kind of amalgamation of art and science in a way. And, and do you feel alone in the field or you did say that you found lots of people who were thinking uh, along similar lines, but academically, are you uh, in a field of one or is it a discipline that is expanding? You know what's fascinating? So this year, actually, at the main management conference, the Academy of Management conference, we will have two uh, uh, panels on uh, uh, the science of serendipity. And, and, and that's, that's kind of like starting out now then at the strategic management conference, which is a huge one in London. Similarly, so so I think now is the kind of point where I think it it has it, it's been a bit of this kind of stepchild where a few people were working on. And now it's 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 coming more towards I think you've probably been through something similar when you came up with your amazing ideas. Right. In terms of how do we think about impact differently and so on that you, you kind of start out and people consider it a bit kind of hippie or, oh, that's kind of like at the at the periphery. And now it feels like, wow, like there's top journals who start to publish it. There's there's top yeah. conferences who give it legitimacy. And so now I think it become like it's it's kind of this cool factor thing that that comes into it and where more and more people get into it. And I think that's the interesting thing where I feel it goes more and more into the mainstream and um for good or bad, I think I think um it, it hopefully kind of is taking taking into that direction. I wonder whether certain people have this capacity to be uh, to play into serendipitous um uh, force fields or whatever, and others just will always struggle uh, with that. Do, do you think it's a teachable uh, skill or do you think it's something you have to be born with? I mean, Pamela Hartigan, my co-author on The Power of Unreasonable People, always felt that entrepreneurship was almost unteachable. You, I mean, you could teach components of it, but but really you had to be born that way. Do you have to be born serendipitous? As someone who's in the teaching profession, um, you know, a lot of what I'm thinking about is how much of what we do is pattern recognition, how much yeah. of what we do is about building a muscle for something versus what is then the thing you have to experience and you have to do. And, and so in this regard, you know, when I think about serendipity, some of us do it intuitively, right? Like some of us grew up that way and, and now this gives them a language. Like I, you know, that's like the initial impetus for writing this was to say, let's give people a language so that they don't have to hide who they really are. If you're the yeah. CEO, who uh, you know came up with um, a, an amazing new thing? Usually, you go to the into the boardroom and you say, "I planned this, I did this, and then this happened." Nobody really believes this. Everyone <laughs> knows that life is more like a squiggle and not like a linear kind of line. And so, essentially, this is about saying, "No, let's give them a, a, a language that doesn't it isn't about passivity, but that's about active." Like I created a culture that allows us to cultivate the serendipity. I had a mindset that allows for this, and so that's actually a strength and not not question my authority. And so, that's kind of the first piece I think where yes, like people intuitively do it, hopefully this gives them language. But more importantly, like in entrepreneurship, it's also what can we learn from them in terms of when we look at the different serendipity stories around the world, from social entrepreneurs, from CEOs of companies, from others, what is the pattern behind what they yeah. despite the stories being so different, what can we learn from this? And then we see particular patterns that we can like learn about, right? We can we can learn how to spot opportunity better. We can learn how to be more alert. We can learn how to connect the dots better. We can learn how to be more tenacious to actually follow through with these things. And so that's the beautiful thing. Once we see it as a process of spotting and connecting dots, we can learn how to spot put dots better, but also how to connect them them better. One of the things you talk about in your book, Connect the Dots, is serendipity fields. And I see a very strong overlap between that idea and regeneration. Um, do you see similar linkages? And, and what in God's name is a serendipity field when it's at home? Yeah, no, I, I really love that you made that that connection because I think that's it's such an interesting thought, right? That at the end of the day, when you think about regeneration, when you think about how do we reboot the world in a way that is that is that is meaningful that puts humanity at the core that puts that puts that puts really responsible solutions at the core and we talked about earlier right how do you not waste a good crisis like we are in the moment yeah. and how do you kind of build that in serendipity is all about potentiality it's about what could be it's about when you think about how complex societal challenges are environmental challenges we cannot map them out for the next 20 years by by definition a lot of these things will unexpectedly emerge the, the best solution to xyz will probably come out of a local community somewhere unexpectedly and we don't know where that will be we don't know how it will be but it will probably happen in a lot of different areas and so to your point the question then is how do we map an area of potential of, mm -hmm. of, of the poss possibility that could be there and that's really about creating a serendipity field where we're saying 
how do we put as many dots out there and how do we train people as much as possible to connect those dots so that we make that serendipity more likely but more importantly also as a next step how do we learn to invest into it how do we learn that you know when you think about i mean the world that you've been um, um uh, very embedded in right when you think about grant proposals uh, to 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 funders you have to map these linear things right i have a plan i do exactly this i do exactly this we don't price a lot of serendipity in this we don't price a lot of different things in this and i think that's kind of really the shift in thinking that that can be so interesting at the moment to say why don't we step back and get more realistic about how actually really interesting solutions emerge for social problems and how can we fund that differently um how can we um think differently about how we empower locals who have these serendipitous ideas and don't discard that directly as oh that's just kind of something that's randomly coming up and so to me that's really about that how do we learn to see that potentiality and then invest into it and and, and make the best out of it when you went to these ceos did you use the word serendipity and what sort of reaction did you get from them because you said earlier on i mean it 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 it, it could sound a little bit uh, hippie or whatever the current um uh, uh, wild and woolly uh, um, descriptor would be. So how, how did business leaders react? So a lot of our research is, is qualitative in terms of we, we observe or we interview and then we let things emerge. So we don't try to put concepts on it, but we try to let it kind of breathe first and see what happens. And so similarly here, our kind of guiding question, for example, was more around, you know, what made you successful? Or what, what kind of like, what did you do uh, to so that X was at purpose was actually happening, like things like this. And then people would talk about, oh yeah, and like unexpectedly so from this corner, this happened. And then unexpectedly I did this and then I did this. And so then as they iterated and talked through it, we would kind of after and after help them sense make and say, oh, that's really interesting. Like this sounds like it might be serendipity. And they would be like, oh my God, like finally I have a word for this. Like maybe there's a process of that I'm actually cultivating serendipity. And so that was the beautiful process also in terms of sense making that they started using their own language first, which was a lot about um, uh, this here planning and this unexpected here. And so kind of this, um, you know, either or. And then essentially, as we would speak more and more and, and would give them more and more vocabulary for, oh, this can actually be an active process of, 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 of creating that. They would be like, oh, my God, yeah, that makes sense. And, and you would even have CEOs like um, Tom Linebarger, for example, at, at mm. Cummins. Um, he actually... He would say something like, well, cultivating serendipity is the only reasonable approach to leadership during uncertainty. Like that's literally the only way of how you can actually navigate this fast changing world in a, in a, in a truthful way. Uh, to, if you don't want to lie to, to people and, you know, others would then use more things like, oh, I can't give you certainty, but I can give you clarity and, and, and you know, playing around these kind of questions. But at the end of the day, so long story short, um, we would essentially see that in their language, they would use a lot of things like unexpected, uh, this and this and this. And then as we would go through, we would make sense out of it and say, oh, wow, that seems to be um, what, what we would consider as, as serendipity. Do you see change agents, social change agents and so on in, in the world being sufficiently uh, aware of the power of serendipity? Or do you think that's also an area where, where there is a need for people to come up a, a, a learning or experience curve? Yeah, that, you know, one of the reasons why I've dedicated the next 10 years of my life on really working on, on this is that I feel our education systems, our organizations are absolutely not equipped for it. They are absolutely like I when I think back to my education, I was educated out of it. I like I was I was told, Christian, you have to plan. You have to to always have a plan to always think like like five, 10 years ahead and so on, so on, so on. So, and serendipity essentially was something we were trying to get rid of, right? We wouldn't even talk about the term. We would just say, like, try to not have unexpected things in your life, right? And I think one of the beautiful things that's happening at the moment as we're understanding that there are ways that you can cultivate this in positive ways is that it really shapes the unexpected away from just the threat to, to actually an ally, like an opportunity. And, and I think to me, you know, John, one of the most... Um, like, like gratifying things that came from when when the content came out was a mother um, uh, writing me and saying, Christian, this is a way for me to reconnect with my autistic son and yeah. to decrease anxiety, to decrease anxiety of the world that's changing so fast. And to me, this is kind of really what this is a lot about, that I think, A, we're extremely ill-equipped for this kind of, um, you know, thing because every education system tries to educate us out of it. Every business school tries to have strategic planning, everything at the core versus actually the idea of, hey, look, um, there, there is a muscle we have to build for, for this. But then also at the same time, I think for us individually, everyone, 
it can help us decrease anxiety. It can help us have more joy about the unexpected versus always seeing it as something that that kind of really deters us from it. And um, I don't know, uh, John, if you had the opportunity. So a very uh, a wonderful mentor of mine, Saul Estrin, who's around the corner from you at LZ, uh, he always used to tell me, Christian, people like you always think there's only one road to Rome. And then you realize you don't even want to be in Rome. And, and to me, that kind of really like, like hit a nerve in terms of saying, wow, like you focus so much on this one career trajectory, one thing, one solution, or to your point, like one way to make the world a better place. And then like you might actually realize there's a much better way to do that. And, and, and maybe that's even uh, leading you into something completely different. And that doesn't have to be a bad thing because actually maybe that's allowing you to understand what your potentiality is. And I think that's really kind of to me that would be the biggest shift over the next 10 years to say, how do we get that at the core of education systems and organizations to say, let's see the unexpected as a potential source of opportunity and yeah. build a muscle around that rather than trying to minimize it and do like risk management that kind of tries to get it away. Part of what I'm looking for is the not the secret, not not the universal answer, but the, but the, but the some broad rules. And I think one of the things I find attractive about your book, Connect the Dots, is is you do give quite a lot of guidance on 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 how to create the conditions in which serendipity can uh, flourish. So what you already know, I think, what you're doing and moving towards is fundamentally important for this sort of um, push now towards regenerative uh, activity, whether it's economic, social, political, you know, ecological, uh, whatever. So keep on trucking, keep on pushing forward. And no, I, I wish you not too many sleepless nights with the, <laughs> the new arrival. And again, Christian, immense thanks for, for doing this. I'm, I'm really very grateful indeed. Well, thank you so much, John. And, and I would love to continue that conversation. I think especially your thoughts, um, you know, around the sense making towards regeneration. I, yeah, I'm yeah. very much looking forward to the potentiality of that. Fantastic. You're a marked man. <laughs>